on a dark night in the arid hinterlands of Sarah, S.E.U. Antonio, an elderly and experienced man from the region, decided to venture into the wilderness in search of answers to the strange events haunting his small village. The elders said that a thorn-filled entity roamed the vicinity, but few dared to explore beyond the known boundaries. Armed only with an aging lantern and courage mixed with despair, SCU Antonio walked along narrow trails where the wind whispered macabre secrets and shadows danced to unsettling murmurs. Upon entering the darkness of the hinterlands, SCU Antonio felt a chill run down his spine, as if the very environment was aware of his presence. His steps echoed in the silence and every creak of the dry vegetation resonated like an ominous omen. Suddenly, the lantern's light revealed something in the distance, a twisted, obscure figure, surrounded by thorns, stood before S.E.U. Antonio. The creature appeared as an intertwining of shadows and thorns, moving with supernatural agility. S.E.U. Antonio felt his heart race but curiosity overcame fear. He approached cautiously, trying to discern the details of that enigmatic presence. The thorn-filled entity made no sound, but its black eyes fixed on S.E.U. Antonio, and every step the elderly man took echoed like an accelerated drumbeat toward the unknown. Abruptly, the creature dissipated into the darkness, leaving only the echo of its thorns scratching through the night. S.E.U. Antonio stood still, perplexed, trying to comprehend what he had just witnessed. Upon returning to the village, S.E.U. Antonio shared his experience, but his words were met with incredulous looks. The thorn-filled entity remained a mystery an enigma haunting the dreams of those who dared to venture into the arid lands of the Sarah Hinterlands. Good night. They say that of the brave, the cemeteries are full. So be careful when playing with things from the beyond, because the victim could be the prankster himself. In the countryside of the city of Viamau in Rio Grande do Sul, GPS coordinates, latitude, longitude, 30 degrees 4 minutes 58.00 seconds south, 51 degrees 1 minute 30.00 seconds west, that when this happened, some 50, 60 years ago, it was even more inland, between the regions known as Faxina Pimenta and Cantagallo, whose boundaries were not well defined. Then, a very intriguing case took place. On those rustic roads where vehicles on wheels, whether they were cars, trucks or even wagons traveled little, the means of locomotion of the rural man for great distances was mainly the horse. Those who were from there rarely left the region, asphalt was rare, and a trip to the city, if it wasn't for a real ride with the trucks that took the production of small properties, would take a day or more. The employees of the ranches, farms, and other households, in their rare moments of leisure and socializing, would go to a bolicho asterisk that was there, to drink, talk and hear the news. 
Asterisk Belicho Commercial establishment that is a mixture of bar, dry and wet store, small bazaar, agricultural. Still quite common in southern Brazil and Uruguay, where the word originates. But behold, in this place, on a Sunday afternoon, the men gathered for a drink in a card game, a game of pipe, and among them two stood out. Some neighbors of mine, kids at that time, remember them, but I'm not allowed to disclose anyone's name in this report. It so happens that the first of these two men was not afraid of anything. But as he was very Gavola, advantage accountant, he had a certain reputation as a liar as to his courage. But he also had a reputation for being a fighter. And that was why no one doubted him in the face of his exaggerated deeds and conquests. The other was a legitimate, quiet eater. They knew about some of his adventures and, mainly, love affairs. But he himself didn't speak or boast, and he didn't even confirm when asked, just laughing. It was, and is, surprising, but they were both friends. That day, the conversation ran wild. So loose that few noticed the night coming. Drinks, hot and beautiful night, the game was getting tired. Soon the stories began, and the haunting stories. Everyone had at least one to share. And, who counted the most, was without a doubt Gavola. One more absurd and heroic than the other and people holding back. But behold, he tells us that on a certain occasion, he was riding on a full moon night and a werewolf jumps on him. That angry man pulled out his harness and whipped the animal to learn not to scare a tame horse and the people holding on. When he then made a comparison between his image with the werewolf and St. George with the fallen in the form of a dragon, after all, the moon was there. The people couldn't hold it any longer and the laughter was general. As was to be expected, Gavola got angry, cursed, hit the table and kicked the bench, mounted his horse and left. Of course, that left a bad mood in the place. After all, everyone there was friends and deep down, they loved Gavola, who despite Gavola, was good company and a hard-working man. That's when Kumkieto had an idea, he was going to scare the other guy, and then, maybe, he'd lose a bit of his poison not take the companionship's jokes so badly. Others wouldn't risk something like that. But he was one of those people who took risks even too much, and he would risk having his friends anger so as not to miss the opportunity to do what we now call fucking. The road that the Gavola followed made a big sharp curve in C and ended in an old gate that was said to be haunted. Each one told a different story of the place but everyone agreed that it was a sinister place and that, at the very least, it caused great discomfort in those who passed by, and that's why no one liked to go there, with that immensity of fields. And I kill and nobody around. Mostly alone. Mostly at night. Every extreme hides its opposite, they say.
If Gavola liked to tell stories of courage so much, especially in the face of the other world, it's because he had some fear, thought come Kieto. He, who did not believe in these things, idealized the following. He would cut through the woods that existed between the sea of the road. Following a straight line between the Bolicho and the gate and arriving there before the Gavola. Then he would lie down on the crossbar of the gate, which was wide enough. And when his friend was getting ready to dismount, get off the horse, which would be stopped at that point, he from above would take off his hat, giving him a fright laughing after telling the others the plan, and with no time to lose, he crossed the road in front of the bolicho and went into the bush. Moments later, along the road, the gavola arrived at the gate. Apprehensive about being in that place, but the horse was calm, and it was believed, at the time and still today, that horses feel things of the other world, and maybe they do. Comma. And the horse's calm soothed them, too. He arrived in front of the old gatehouse, and as he was about to get off his horse and open it, something took his hat off. He still looked around, but the hat hadn't fallen off, it was gone. A laugh too close in that place where he saw no one was enough to send the horse galloping back down the road they had come. He crossed in front of the bowling alley and continued running. That night, he spent in a friend's shed, he wasn't going to go through the gate again. The other day he went there accompanied by two friends, and it was one of them who found his hat on the transom by the gate. They came back and the story was told for laughter to take over the place. In the end, even Gavola ended up laughing at the joke that Kamkieto played on him, and the laughter would have continued if few regular customers had entered with sad expressions and scared. Some said it was a betrayed husband, or another type of vengeful disaffection. Others said they were bandits or those crazy people who kill people and no one finds out the real reason, if there is any. They even talked about things from the other world, although it was very clear that this was things with a knife. In the thicket that existed between the Bolicho and the old gatehouse come Kieto lay dead, stabbed in the back while he was going to play a game with his friend Gavola. And it is up to the reader's imagination to know who took the hat and laughed at the night's fear, since come Kieto died before making the plan joke. The concierge, as far as I know, is still there today. The road has changed but no one has taken it away, they just leave it open, in the middle of the field. I thought about going there, taking a picture and putting it next to this text but I didn't. When the opportunity came, I would have to go alone.